Good morning to all. I am S. Sundara Selvan, Assistant Professor, Department of Mechanical, Arasa Engineering College, Kumbhakona. It's my great pleasure to welcome all the dignitaries. I take this golden opportunity to welcome our management in a special way. Next, I take this opportunity to welcome our beloved principal, renowned vice principal ma'am, and dean of academics, and all the learned members of our institutions, and all the participants of this today webinar. Thank you, one and all. May I request our principal sir to deliver the highlights of our college and today's webinar, sir. A very good morning to you all. I am Dr. T. Balamurugan, Principal of RSA Engineering College, Kumbhakonam. Our college was started in the year 2001 with the three undergraduate programs. From the inception, we have committed ourselves to provide outcome-based quality education. At the result of that, today we are providing eight undergraduate programs and four postgraduate programs. The commitment and hard work by our faculty members and the management resulted and our students every academic year, they got university ranks. Recently last year, one of our students got university first rank. In order to recognize our quality education, the National Assessment and Accreditation Council gave accreditation to our college. Most of the eligible programs are accredited by National Board of Accreditation. The University Grants Commission recognized our college under 2F and 12B category. Today, I am very happy to hear that the Department of Mechanical Engineering is going to organize a webinar on introduction to design of experiments by having Dr. N. Sendhil Kumar, Professor of Mechanical Engineering, Adiparasakti Engineering College as the resource person. On behalf of the management, I wholeheartedly welcome the resource person, Dr. N. Sendhil Kumar, Professor of, De Professor of Mechanical Engineering, Adiparasakti Engineering College. I also extend my welcome to all the participants, those who are very eager to gain some knowledge in the design of experiments. In my point of view, the webinar on introduction to design of experiments is highly useful to the academicians and the research scholars. Here, I hope this will give a complete detail about how to design the methodology for your particular research problem. So by having an effective interaction with our resource person, you can get more knowledge in how to design the methodology to analyze or to get the solution for your research problems. So by having some idea in this, you can choose the best suited methodology for your research works. Hope Try to effectively utilize this, have a very good interaction with this. My best wishes for the grand success of this webinar. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm glad to tell about today's webinar. Now our principal, sir, has given a wonderful speech by his own style about the highlights of the college and webinar in a great way. Thank you, sir. Now it's my pleasure to introduce the resource person of the day, Dr. N. Chandil Kumar for today's webinar. Dr. N. Chandil Kumar completed his B.E. Mechanical degree from Government Engineering College, Salem, affiliated to University of Madras in the year 1998 with first class. He received his M.E. Manufacturing degree in the year 2007 from Madras Institute of Technology, Chennai, a constituent college of Anna University, Chennai, which first class and distinction. He has awarded gold medal for his master degree. He received his doctoral degree from Anna University, Chennai in the year of 2014 
for his work on effect of cutting to geometries under the guidance of Dr. T. Tamilarasan sir. His core research area is the metal cutting, composite materials, optimization, machining of newer materials and finite element analysis. Presently, he is working as a professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering, Adhipara Shakti Engineering College, Mel Maruthur. So far, he has published 57 research articles in the reputed peer-reviewed international and national journals and presented 27 articles in the international and national conferences. So far, he had published four textbooks. At present, he is guiding eight PhD scholars in the area of nanocomposite materials, anaerobic digestions, and computer-aided vision. Two research scholars had submitted their thesis, and one research scholar had submitted their synopsis. He had awarded the Outstanding Reviewer Recognition from Measurement Journal Elsevier from the year of 2018. May I request Dr. N. Sindhir Kumar sir to deliver a valuable speech. Sir. Well, thank you. A warm good morning to one and all who are gathered through this webinar. First of all, I have to thank <coughs> Dr. T. Balamurgan sir, Principal, Arasa Engineering College, and Dr. Kumar, Head of the Department, the coordinators Sundara Selvan, Kaviyarasan, and Sadish Kumar for this opportunity to get connected to you through this webinar. I heard about there is more than 1,500 participants are registered, and it's a very good sign, and I am really happy. So, first of all, I have to thank uh, Mr. Sundara Selvan for the nice introduction, and with this, we will move on to the webinar topic. So, design of experiments. So, what is this design of experiments? So, as told by the principal, so this is a methodology how to carry out experiments. Because just like that, we cannot do any experimental work. There should be some methods that should be followed for an experimental purposes. So, somebody will be asking, so which technique will be best, or which design of experiment is best, so that I can publish a paper on all this. The novelty of the study is more important than the technique. So these design of experiments are nothing but the techniques that is being used to carry out some experimental studies. So the most important thing is the novelty of your work. So this is just a methodology. We can use a water methodology that is appropriate for our studies. Okay, so with a small introduction, I will move on to this design of experiments. So this DISMOF experiment is a vast field. So in this webinar, we are going to look into some of the basic concepts of DISMOF experiments. Okay. So the DISMOF experiments is a statistical tool that is introduced in the years 1920s by Sir R. A. Fisher. Everybody knows he is the person who has worked more on the statistical tools than anybody else. So this this not experiments is not a new concept. So this concept has evolved in the early 1920s itself. So these statistical tools, that is this not experiment, its first application or implementation is not in engineering field. Okay, so where this first two first implement, implementation of the DOE was was done. This was done by Fisher in the agriculture field. Okay, so for what purpose he is going to do this implementation? So the purpose of implementing this DOE in agriculture is to get a better yield of crops. So for obtaining better yield of crops, Fisher has used this technique. So what are the inputs that he has considered for his methodology and what is the output that he has considered in this? So his primary goal is to determine the optimum water, sunshine and everything. Is to have the optimum water. What should be optimum water level? Whether it should be a drip irrigation or it should be a flooded irrigation likewise. Then what is the current quantity of rain? the sunshine that is required, 
a fertilizer, the amount of fertilizer that is required and the soil conditions because different soil is available. So which soil is best to yield a better crop? So that is the first area in which Fisher has used this is not experiments. So by using this DISNAP ex experiments, what Fisher has done? He has created an experimental matrix. He has developed an experimental matrix so that all the possible combinations of input factors that he has considered has been done, has been incorporated. For example, he has taken optimum water, rain, sunshine, fertilizer, and solid conditions. So these combinations he had to incorporate in an experimental matrix. So that is very, very important. So how we are going to incorporate this? How many experimental trials that he is going to carry? Whether he is going to study some interactions? So he, there are many factors that decide the experimental matrix that he is going to create. Okay, so using these, input, uh, these factors as input, he has designed an experimental matrix. And based on that combination, he has done some experiments and he has recorded the yield of the crop. And finally, he has determined the optimum condition which has produced a higher yield. So here you can see what is meant by optimum. So I have some resources in my hand. So that resources may be restricted. So out of the available resources, what I am going to get it. Okay, with the available resources, I have to obtain my best value. And that is called as optimum condition. I have a limited resources. With that limited resources, my output should be higher. Okay, so that is called as the optimization. So what is DOE is? So DOE is nothing but the method of experimentation. So as told, it is an experimental methodology. It is an experimental methodology for complex process. It is the experimental methodology for complex process with an objective of optimizing the process. So why we are going to call this as an complex process? Because simple process that, no, does, that doesn't need any kind of experimental trials or experimental matrix. Whereas in the case of a complex process, it is very, very tough for us to determine the exact combinations. So in that cases, we have to develop an experimental matrix with all possible combinations. So this word is very, very important. With all possible combinations. If I want to incorporate that interaction effects also, so we'll see what is the interaction effects and all these things later on. So if we want to incorporate these interaction effects, then the number of experimental trials will get increased out. And finally, the objective of optimizing the process. So what is my ultimate aim to optimize? So in the previous example, that is in agriculture, we have seen higher yield. That is, I am going to maximize the yield. I am going to maximize the yield. So optimization is of maximizing or minimizing. In mechanical field, we will come across material removal rate. We will come across productivity. Okay, this material removal rate and productivity, this has to be higher, that is maximum. So that objective is maximization. While we are going to come on to surface roughness, tool wear, the number of rejections, then obviously it has to be as low as possible, that is minimization. So my objective may be maximizing or minimizing. So based on this, we have to do the experiments and then we have to analyze the outputs and then we are going to move towards the objective of our study. So what DOE actually is? So DOE is defined as the process of planning. So how we are going to plan? So which process we want to study? So first that I have to decide. So whether we are going to study the manufacturing process, or any metallurgical aspects, or any scheduling problems, or any thermal related problems. So it's a process of planning that things. So for planning, we should consider what are the factors that is very, very essential for that. Then designing. 
So how we are going to design the experimental matrix? So first planning, that is what are the input factors that I am going to consider for the study? And based upon that, I am going to design the experimental matrix. After designing, I have to do my experimental and then I have to analyze the outputs. So with the combination of inputs, I'm going to carry out the experiment and then I'm going to record the outputs and that output has to be analyzed. So why we have to analyze the outputs? For example, my output is material removal ray. My output is tool wear. So why I have to analyze these things? So if I am going to change an input parameter, what is the effect of that over the output parameter? That we are going to study. So we are going to have a valid and objective conclusions from the experimental study in a more efficient and effective manner. So that is very, very important in this. Okay. So the purpose of this study is to have a valid and objective conclusions. So before going for a process that I am going to study, for example, if it is a turning process or an wire cut EDM or anything in mechanical, okay, before going into the process or before going for this vision of experiments, we should have a thorough understanding of the process or a prior knowledge of the process. Without knowing the prior knowledge of the process, if I'm going to do that experiment, then it will end up in the wrong way. So a good understanding of the process is essential. Why? So we can ask the question, why? What is the need of that? If I'm not having a knowledge of the process, I am unable to select the most influential input parameters. For in turning process, three main parameters are machining parameters. People normally call it as machining parameters. That is cutting speed, feed rate and depth of cut. There are many other parameters, tool geometry also, nose radius, rack angle, relief angle, approach angle. Okay, there are many factors, but the most important factors are this machining parameters, cutting speed, speed rate, and the top. If I don't have any prior knowledge in turning, then I there is a possibility of omitting the most influential parameters. So, so the effect of that parameter may be higher towards the output. So that's why a good understanding of the process that we are going to select for experimental is very, very essential. So what we are going to do in an experiment? So this design of experiments is a methodology. In that methodology, what we are going to do? We are intentionally going to change the values of some input parameters. For example, if I am going to consider cutting speed, in the first trial, I am going to consider it as 100 meter per minute. And intentionally, I am going to change the cutting speed to 200 meter per minute in the second experiment. So that the change of cutting speed, its influence can be determined over the output response. If I am going to change the input, consecutive or subsequently, there will be a change in the output. Okay, so that we are going to study in this experiment. So what are the different methods of experimentation? What are the different methods of experimentation? The first one is the trial and error method. The trial and error method is the conventional method of doing things. Okay, consider a lock. Consider a lock. I want to open the lock. It is a five digit lock. For example, it is a digital lock. It has five digits. So first we will try with that combination. 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Second, I am going to try with 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. So this is I am going to trial and error. So there is no definite methodology in designing that. Okay, so this is trial and error. We doesn't know where we are going to get focused on. Okay, then we come on to the single factor experiment. In the single factor experiment, 
only one factor will be changed at a time, while the other parameters, other factors that the selector will be retained to a constant level. That is only one factor to be changed at a time. Then we come across the most important part of this uh, DOE, that is factorial experimental design. So in this factorial experimental design, we have two classifications. One is full factorial and the other one is the partial factorial. The full factorial is at the same time, so simultaneously, we are going to change many parameters at a time. We are going to change many parameters at a time. So all possible combinations will be present. But the main drawback is higher number of experimental runs. Okay, that and all we'll see later on. Then we have the fractional factorial. The other name for fractional factorial is partial factorial. Partial factorial experiments. It is going to be similar to that of full factorial, but with the reduced number of experiments. How this the experimental runs are being reduced? That also we'll see later on. So in factorial design, we have full factorial and fractional or partial factorial runs. Then we have the other designs such as Taguchi's DOE. So this is the familiarest one. So the special type of orthogonal arrays that is formulated and designed by Taguchi based on Latin square experiments is called as Taguchi's DOE. So Taguchi's DOE is based on Latin square orthogonal arrays. Then we come across the response surface methodology. So we are going to fit a regression model. That is an empirical model will be developed for the output. And based on that, some response surfaces will be designed so that the analysis may be done. Then in the RSM, we have the box bench and design also. So there are many other designs like this. So mostly we will be considering only this factorial experiments and the other designs such as Taguchi, RSM and all this. So these are designing the experiment. Okay, how to analyze? There are many statistical tools that is available for analyzing. So you don't get confused with this. Factorial, full factorial or partial factorial, Taguchi, RSM, these are all DOE, that is Vision of Experimental Techniques. How to analyze the outputs? There are many other techniques. For example, SN ratio of Taguchi that is used. The SN ratio is nothing but signal to noise ratio. So it's also a statistical tool that is used to analyze the data, the outputs. Then we come across gray relational grade, GRE, gray relational analysis. It is a multi-objective optimization approach that can be used for analyzing the outputs. Then we have desirability analysis in RS that is also used for multi-objective optimization. Then we have principal component analysis. Then we have topsis approach likewise. So each and every tools are used for analyzing the output. So that is a separate topic. So our topic today is focused on how to initially design an experimental matrix based on which we have to perform the experimental trial. The first thing that we are going to see is the trial and error. First of all, we are going to look into is the trial and error. So this is the basic form of learning. I don't know anything about the process. I don't know how to design an experimental matrix. I don't know anything. So in that case, the best thing that we can do for learning is doing a trial and error approach. So this is the basic form of learning. So I can change the n number of combinations. Intentionally or unintentionally, I can change this parameter variation. So in some cases, it is efficient or applicable, but Whenever I am going to increase the number of input factors, then it becomes more tedious and complex. For example, if I'm going to have three factors, cutting speed, feed rate, and depth of cut, then this trial and error may be a best approach for me. 
may be a best approach for me. But if I'm going to add one more factor or another two factors, then it becomes more complex. So the best example for this trial and error approach is finding the combination of a law. So as told previously, if it is of five digits, we doesn't know how to end up with the correct combination. For this, we can go with thousand number of experiments, that is trial and error, or 2000 or even 10,000 combinations also we can do. Okay, so why we call it as a trial and error? The previous trials or previous combination of locks does not provide any insight to the subsequent trial. For example, the first combination 0, 0, 1, not 1, 0, 1, that is my combination. In the second case, I'll go with 0, 0, 1, 0, 2 that don't have any insight to the previous one because in the previous condition, the lock may not get opened. So I have to try a next one. That is trial and error. Okay. So how we are going to do? So this is represented in a flowchart here. I have some thinking on my mind, how to perform some experiment. That I'm going to try by means of some experiment. I have an output. That I am going to analyze, and then I will have some other idea. So previously I had an idea. After doing an experiment, my idea tends to change. So now I am going to try the second idea. Then based on that, I am going to think, and then I am going to do some experiments. So this goes on and on and on until a a valid conclusions are arrived. So what are the limitations? So what are the limitations that we are going to have in this trial and error approach? So this is a, so everyone knows this, how to get in and how to get out of this mess. Okay. So it lacks directional focus. So we can move in any way, but finally we have to move out. If I'm going in the wrong way, if I'm going to proceed in the wrong way, then I may end up in a wrong direction or focus. So lack direction and focus, then it is pure guesswork. There is no specific methodology for that. So this trial and error approach are purely based on the guessworks. So how many different permutation and computation exist? N numbers. So for five digits, you have to think. Okay, so this is, so higher number of experimental runs will may be there, depending upon the input factors that we are going to select. If the number of input factors is less, then it is an efficient one. So, as told earlier, so what will happen if more number of variables are added? If I'm going to add more and more variables, then the complexity of the Ludo, yeah. matrix design will become higher. So it is a time-consuming process. It is a time-consuming process. Because we don't know when to have, when to obtain a solution. When we are going to obtain a solution. So until we have to continue this experiment. So that a valid conclusion is arrived. So it takes much time. Then we move on to this single factor experiment in which one factor is being changed at a particular time. So in the single factor experiments, we are going to change only one factor at a time, whereas all the other considered factors should be kept at a constant level value. Right? So select only one factor and I have to vary it by holding all other factors constant. If I'm going to construct three values for a factor, then it may be the constant factor may be held in the first value or second value or third value. Okay, that we'll see in the example. So why we are going to construct the single factor? <clears throat> what is the necessity of that? So what is the effect of changing the value of an input over the corresponding output? For example, cutting speed, feed rate, depth of cut. That I am going to consider. And the output that I am going to determine is material removal rate and tool wheel. 
So in the single factor experiment, I am going to change the values of cutting speed to 100, 200, 300. Whereas the feed rate and the depth of cut is maintained at a particular value. So by this, by changing the cutting speed, the corresponding changes in the material removal rate and depth of cut, how it is going to affect this output that we can determine. For example, if a cutting speed is varied from 100 to 200, obviously what happens to the cutting, what happens to the material removal rate? What happens to the tool wear? There will be some deviation, whether it may be in the higher side or lower side. So by changing the cutting speed, there is a change in tool wear and MRR that we are going to determine. Similarly for feed rate, if I'm going to change feed rate, then cutting speed and the depth of cut should be maintained at a constant value. So that is the concept of this single factor experiment. So these types of experiments is very, very simple to analyze. Okay, but this is also a complex one when the number of factors tends to increase and it is time consuming. So the purpose of this study is to identify what changes is to identify what changes that the output will have by changing the input values. The corresponding change in output over the change in the input values that we are going to have. So the main disadvantage or limitations of the single factor experiment is it is more time consuming as similar to the of the trial and error experiment. Because changing one factor or one level value of an input parameter at a time will involve more repeated experiments, will involve more repeated experiments. So the number of experimental trials will be higher in this case. So similarly, the interaction that exists between the selector input variables, for example, cutting speed, feed rate, and depth of cut. These are all called individual parameters. So by changing the cutting speed, I can determine what effect this cutting speed will have on the material removal rate or tool. But there are some combinatory effects. We call it as the combinatory effect or interaction effect. A, B, C, three parameters, cutting speed, feed rate, depth of cut, A, B, C. That is called as main effects. A, B is a combinatory effect. That is the combination of cutting speed and feed rate. A, C, the combination of cutting speed and depth of cut. Then B, C, combination of feed rate and depth of cut. This is a two-way interaction. We call it as a two-way interaction. Similarly, A, B, C, that is a three-way interaction. So what this actual interaction is refers to? I am going to do a work, okay, so that I can finish the work by five hours. I'm going to finish the work by five hours. I am going to add one, to my, one, one more person to my team. So now two persons are going to work on that. The time it has to reduce or it has to increase. If it is going to get reduced, then the interaction effect is higher. Because as a combinatory effect, it is very easier for us. Similarly, if cutting speed and feed rate are combined together, there will be a certain interaction effect that have an impact on the material removal rate or depth of cut or tool wear. That's why that's what we call it as. The Kimberley, Australia. So this is okay. and Kimberley, simply Australia. example of this single factor experiment. So here in this case, that is can you guys it's only 30 meters. We are going to consider four input parameters. Yeah, guys, fucking high. It's okay. fucking beautiful though. Speed, temperature, tire pressure, and case is design. So in the Perfect. experimental number one. The experiment number one is nothing but the first experimental trial or experimental run. The words that we can use for this is experimental trial or experimental run. The first one is speed of 65, temperature 75, tire pressure 32, and cases is in A. So here you can see speed is varied by two values, 65 and 70. Similarly for temperature 75, 85, tire pressure by 32, and then 27 and two chases design A and B. So 
So in the first experimental trial, trial or run, the speed is fixed at 65 and temperature you can see. And in the second run, temperature, tire pressure and case is designed, I am going to keep it as constant and the speed alone we are going to change. Okay, in the second, third and fourth, third and fourth, the chassis design is changed to B and the speed alone gets very down. That is, in single experimental run, we have to change only one parameter so that the influence of the parameters can be studied and no interaction effect cannot be studied in this case of this single factor experiment. So here you can see a different one. The speed is in 65, 70, 65, 70, and temperature 75, 85, tire pressure 32, 27, but cases is given as A and B. So these values, 65, 75, 32, and all these things are called as numerical factors. That is, it is in numbers, whereas the chases design is given as A and B. That we call it as categorical parameters. That is called as categorical parameters. The 65, 75, the 32, 27, these are called as quantitative parameters. Quantitative, quantified, that is being quantified. So quantified parameters, whereas these cases A and B are called as qualitative parameters. We call it as a qualitative parameters or categorical parameters. So you have to be very, very careful in this quantitative or numerical factors. These two are one and the same and qualitative and category parameters. These two are one and the same. Then we come across the factorial experiment. So in factorial experiment, it involves more than one independent variables or factor in the study. So here we are going to come across a new term that is called as independent variable. If there is an independent variable, then there will be a dependent variable. Now, what is the independent variable or what is the dependent variable? The independent variables are input variables, whereas the outputs are the dependent variables because the output depends on the inputs. And the input is not dependent on output. The output that I am going to obtain, the tool we are, the material removal rate, will be decided by the values of the inputs. So the inputs become the independent variables, whereas the output becomes the dependent variables. So here in this case, this independent variable, that is the inputs, okay, I'm going to involve more than one input, or I'm going to change more than one input at a particular time. The drawback of single factor experiment is it doesn't involve any interaction effect between the parameters. But in the case of factorial experiment, interaction effect will also be included in this. So these factorial experiments are widely accepted. It's a widely accepted design methodology for experimental matrix. Okay, in most of the research works and also in most of the manufacturing industries. And here also we can, will come across two levels and three levels. So what is meant by levels, two level, three level? For cutting speed, if I'm going to consider 100 meter per minute and 200 meter per minute, then it becomes two level. 100 is one level and 200 is another level. Whereas in the case of three levels, for cutting speed, 100 meter per minute, 200 meter per minute, and 300 meter per minute, then it becomes three level. So how many values that I'm going to consider for each and every input? that determines the level values. So in this two level and three level designs, the most widely used is two level factors because it is very, very easy to design, less number of experiments and efficient to run. While I am going to involve another level value, then it becomes complicated. Then it becomes a complicated one. So, the drawback of the single factor experiment is the interaction effect. It does not involve or study the interaction effect among the input parameters, but in the case of factorial designs, that the joint effect or the combinatory effect or the interaction effect 
so joint effect combinatory effect or interaction effect these three are one and the same so that can be incorporated during the design stage itself so what is that impact on the output that we can study so what is the impact of the combined impact of cutting speed and feed rate on tool wear that i can study what is the combined impact of feed rate and depth of cut over tool wear that also i can study by using this factorial experiments so the factorial experiments may be a full factorial or a partial factorial or a fractional factorial so in both these cases in both these factorial designs that is full factorial and partial we have all possible combinations of the selected input parameters along with their interaction effects so all the inputs the cutting speed feed rate depth of cut can be simultaneously adjusted or simultaneously it can be varied for example if i'm going to change the cutting speed from 100 and 200 simultaneously i can vary the value of the feed rate also so simultaneous variation of all the input parameters is possible in this factorial design so why we are going to do this simultaneously why we have to change all the input parameters the drawback of trial and error and single factor experiment is larger experimental runs which is time consuming so by simultaneous variation of all the input parameters the number of experimental runs will tends to reduce so that the time period that is required for completing the experiments tends to reduce so these factorial designs are not time consuming the reason is simultaneously i am going to change the values of the input parameter so that it will it have an impact on the number of experiments that we are going to carry out so this reveals this fractional factorial also reveals the complex in interactions because simultaneously i am going to vary the values of input factors so the complex in interactions that exist between the input parameters can be studied and also which factors are more important so in our case for example if i am going to consider cutting speed feed rate depth of cut among these three which is most influential whether it is the cutting speed or whether it is the feed rate or whether it is the depth of cut so among these three inputs which is going to have a higher influence that can also be determined by simultaneously changing all these values okay so here you are seeing a table so this table is a two level design factorial table so this comprises of both full factorial as well as partial factorial okay the whites that are the full factorial designs whereas the yellow green red are partial factorial designs or partial factorial designs the upper row 2 3 4 5 or number of factors or number of parameters or number of inputs and on the y axis we have number of runs so on the top axis top row 2 that is if i am going to have two factors cutting speed and feed rate then in for the two level factorial design i will be having 2 power 2 that is 4 for two level factorial design we will be using the formula 2 power k whereas for three level factorial designs we will be having 3 power k okay but here we are going to look into only the two level designs of factorial simultaneously for three parameters for three parameters for two level it is 2 power k so 2 power 3 which is equal to 2 into 2 into 2 which is equal to 8 which is equal to 8 so on y axis you can see 8 on y axis you can see 8 on y axis you can see 8 so here you can see 8 on y axis you can see 
but similarly we can have this also this red you can see this red you can see here that is 2 power 3 minus 1 here you can see the roman letter 3 so what is that 3 roman letter 3 so similarly we can we can have here in yellow we can have 4 in yellow we can have 4 and the green we can have 5 so what is this 3 4 5 here we have 6 7 8 9 10 so these are all called as design resolutions these are all called as design resolution so here for three parameters normally we will be having eight experiments but we have reduced the experiment of four for design resolution three for design resolution three similarly for four factors we have for four factors 2 power 4 which is equal to 16 but here in this case we have eight that is the descent resolution four so what is this descent resolution sir okay here we will be using a word confounding we will using the word alias or confounding which is a negative term okay so if here we will be having using terms that is called as main effects and interaction we will be using main effects and interaction so what is meant by main effect and what is meant by interaction so three parameters i am going to consider a b and c if the effect of individual parameters are studied then it becomes main effect so what is the effect of a what is the effect of b what is the effect of c that is main effect <laughs> among a a b c i am going to consider the joint influence of a and b the joint influence of a and c and joint influence of b and c then it becomes two way that is if i'm going to consider two parameters simultaneously it becomes a two way in the case of a b c simultaneously i'm going to consider the joint influence of these parameters that's why it is called as a three way interaction of us okay so with this i will go on to the design resolutions so what this design resolutions actually means so this design resolutions is a characteristic of alias or confounding so we are using this word confounding or aliasing okay so confounding is nothing but the inability to estimate some effects right even though i am going to change even though i am going to consider the joint effect that the effect may not be estimated properly so that is called as confounding so inability to estimate some effects so based on this confounding only we are going to have which design resolution we are going to have we can select so for designed experiments normally even though we have up to 10 resolutions design resolutions up to 10 yeah, here, you can see, so here you can see up to 10 up to 10 we are going to have the resolutions that is for 10 up to 10 experiments we have this but only three resolutions are very very important that is resolution 3 resolution 4 and resolution 5 so what is this resolution 3 means so resolution 3 designs are we are going to consider only the main effects because there is no compounding effect on them so we are going to consider only the main effects but when comparing this main effects with the two factor interactions then we have the compounding that is it is instable the effect is instable okay so the main effects are compounded with two factor interactions and two factor interactions are compounded with each other that is ab is compounded with bc and bc is compounded with ac so likewise that is the instability exists so while analyzing these instabilities should be removed this instability may be removed so i am not going to consider that instability that is interaction so the number of experimental runs will tend to lower so that's why for eight experiments 
we have ended up with four that is i am not going to consider any interaction effects so that is the pure meaning of that if i am going to consider the interaction effects then 2 power 3 i will be going with eight runs but if i am going to consider four runs then the interaction effects will be eliminated we are going to only consider the main effects so that a reduced condition exists that is i am going to move from full factor to partial factorial so now you may be clear we can choose full factorial or partial factorial if i am going to consider partial factorial which compounding effects we are going to eliminate that we are going to desire and then we are going to select so what is this descent resolution for so this main effects are comp are not compounded with each other and also the main effects are not compounded with two factor interaction effects but previously in the case of descent resolution 3 only main effect is there but the two factor interaction is compounded that is instable but here in this case if i am going to consider descent resolution 4 then i can consider the two level interaction or two factor interaction but three two factor interaction among themselves it is instable okay so individual two factor interaction i can study but the interaction among the two level so ab and bc so ab is an interaction bc is an interaction and ac is an interaction okay among these three if there is any interaction that will be instable in this case so this results in higher number of experimental runs than that of the resolution 3 descent resolution 3 so descent resolution 4 so here the interactions are compounded with the three level or three factor interaction so here in this case we have to consider the main effects the two factor interaction and two factor interaction among two factor interaction so similarly this will result in higher number of experiments so now i will go back to this table once again now you can see so for five factors so i am going to choose five factor the full factorial for five factor is 32 runs so 2 power 5 here i am going with 2 power 5 so that is 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 so that is 2 power 5 that is so that is 2 power 5 here okay so 2 power 5 here so here you can see for five factors we have eight runs for five factor we have eight runs that is descent resolution 3 that is we are going to study only the main effects in this case for the same five factor we are going to have the resolution 5 that is 16 experiments so here you can see the green one that is we are going to consider the main effects and also we are going to consider the two factor interaction we are also going to consider the two factor interaction whereas with the 32 experimental runs 2 power 5 we are going to consider the main effects the two factor interactions and three factor interactions also we are going to study so that's why we can choose among the various alternatives between the partial factorial and the full factorial in partial factorial also based on the descent resolutions and the interaction effects that we require we can choose the appropriate factorial runs so this full factor experiment consists of all possible combinations that is the main effects the two level interactions the three level interactions so all possible combinations that exist among the selected input parameters will be presented in the full factorial experiments so previously itself we have seen there will be two level and three level but most probably or most widely used full factorial experiments is 
two levels because it is very very easy to analyze that's why we will be using this formula 2 power k so 2 stands for the number of levels and k stands for the number of input parameters if i am going to consider three level in full factorial if i am going to consider three level then the formula changes to 3 power k but 3 is the number of levels and k is the number of input parameters so the main drawback of full factorial design is it is also time consuming but the time will be lower than that of the single factor and trial and error why it is time consuming why it is time consuming because it has to incorporate all the main effects two factor interactions and three factor interactions so that the number of runs may be higher the number of runs will be higher but if i am going to incorporate all these interactions the accuracy of data and the interpretation of results will be really good so that we can have a effective and efficient conclusions or a valid conclusions we can arrive from this okay so while doing experiments nowadays we have to choose higher number of experiments so that a valid conclusions may be arrived so what are the benefits of going for full factorial design so as told we can study the effect of main effects that is a b and c so individual parameter effects we can study and also the interaction effects a b a c and then bc the interaction effects can also be studied and then it develops a regression model so the regression model is called as a empirical model here because it is purely based on the experiment so the empirical model that we are going to develop from this full factorial design provides the exact prediction of the outputs for a given inputs so the rsm is purely based on this factorial design the rsm is purely based on the factorial designs so that it develops its own empirical model and based on that only the response surfaces will be fitted upon so here you can see a full factorial experiment ex example here we are going to consider a b c so three inputs i am going to provide i am going to have and two outputs y1 and y2 or my two outputs so here the a is brand it is costly and cheap so two level so in this case they have considered two level so my formula is 2 power k since three inputs so 2 power 3 which is equal to eight experiments so here you can see run order eight okay on the first column you can see standard order the standard order is the order that while designing that while designing which makes this standard one but the run order is nothing but making it randomization the purpose of randomization is to eliminate the experimental error so there will be some standard uh, the experimental designs and run order makes the standard order to randomize so randomly i am going to develop so here you can see first i am going to carry out experiment number 2 then 3 then 5 4 and finally 1 so the purpose of this randomization is to eliminate the experimental error so brand i am going to choose the two levels so costly cheap time 4 minutes 6 and power 75 and 100 watts in case and y y1 and y2 are my outputs so what is this experiment i am going to make some tasty popcorns so for popcorns we need corn kernels we need corn so that is my input so the corns that we are going to select is costlier or cheap how much time we have to fry whether i have to fry in 4 minute for 4 minutes or 6 minutes what is the power required for frying the corns 75 watt or 100 watt so this is the combination this is the input and two level values so here i am going to change this so here you can see the a and b are simultaneously changed so first one costly and four 
and power is down to 5. But sec in the second run order, cheap. So I'm going to change the A from costly to cheap and the B from 4 to 6. So simultaneous variation is possible with this. And my output is test. What is the test of the popcorn? And simultaneously, I'm going to consider what is bullets. During frying the popcorn, the corns, some corns may not be popped out. The unpopped corn is called as bullets. The unpopped corn is called as bullets. So here we have carry out the experiment based on two power K model. That is a two factorial design, that is eight experiments. So these outputs, we can analyze in many methods. And that is a separate topic. So here, four factors I have considered. Cutting speed, feed rate, depth of cut, and coolant. And one output I have considered. So here, the cutting speed is changed by two values, 100 and 200, similarly for all the three inputs. So 2 power k, so 2 power 4, which is equal to 2 into 2, 4, into 2, 8, 8 into 2, 16. So 16 experiments I am going to consider. And that is a full factorial design. So there are many softwares that we can use for full factorial designs. We can use Minitab. We can use Design Expert. Okay, so that are all most familiar softwares used for designing these experiments. The fractional factorial experiment. So these factor fractional experiments has fewer runs, has fewer runs than that of the full factorial designs. So based on the design resolutions, based on the design resolutions, the fewer number runs will be obtained. Whether we are going to select the design, design resolution 3 or design resolution 4 or design resolution 5. So based on that, how much runs is getting reduced? Okay. So consider this example. So here I'm going to have five. Temperature, current density, pH, then the salt concentration, then stirring rate. So this is used for an electroplating process. If uh, for a full factorial design, we'll be having two power K because it has two levels, minus one and plus one. So two levels, so two power five. So two power five is equal to 32 experiments. But here, what we are considering is only 16. Only 16. So two power K, which is equal to 32 experiments. But in the case, we are going to with 16 experiments. That is, we are going to consider descent resolution five. So what is this descent resolution five means? We are going to consider the main effects and we are going to consider the two level interaction effects and three level interaction effects, but there will be some alliance or compounding or instability that exists between the two level and the three level interactions. So we are going to consider the main effects, two level interaction and the three level interactions. Then interactions between the two level interactions also we are going to consider. But interactions between the two level and three level interactions, we are not going to study. That is the descent resolution four. Sorry, five. So here, another example. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So seven, seven inputs I'm going to consider. So seven in inputs I'm going to consider. Okay. So generally for full factorial, two power seven, which is equal to 128 experiments. But we are going to select only eight experiments. That is descent resolution three. That is only main effects. Only main effects I'm going to consider are not any interaction effects. Here A, street, up and down. This is called as a qualitative parameter. That is categorical parameter. Tires, PSA, the pressure. 40, 50. This is quantitative parameter or numerical parameter. So, if I'm going to also, we should be very, very specific in whether it is a categorical parameter or numerical parameter that we are going to select. Then, what is this DOE? So, it is a statistical method. It's a statistical method. So, DOE is nothing but a statistical method. 
its main purpose is to plan experiments in an efficient manner in an efficient manner to yield valid and objective conclusions so that is my main thing so during performing an experiment so we are going to vary the levels of factors simultaneously rather than one factor at a time that is we are moving towards factorial design rather than single factor experiments in the case of single factor experiments we are going to change only one factor value at a time but in the case of the fractional designs we are going to change number of factor values simultaneously so that the main effects and the interaction effects can be studied so why we have to study the interaction why we have to study the interaction so example i have previously given so the effect of cutting speed on tool wear will be different but when combined with the feed rate the effect of this interaction in cutting speed and feed rate this effect will be higher on tool wear so high speed and high feed rate obviously the tool wear will be higher so rather than a single effect or a main effect then in this case the interaction effect will be very very high so it is necessary to study the interaction effects during your experimental trials that's why in the initial itself i have <clears throat> suggested you to go with higher number of experiments the purpose of higher number of experiments is to incorporate more interaction effects in your study if you are going to study only the main effects then you will end up with lesser number of experiments in the, okay so based on that if you are going to write any manuscript such manuscript for submission to journals it will not be accepted nowadays previously it has been accepted but here nowadays per day thousands and thousands of manuscripts is being submitted to journals so they require novelty they require novelty and what is your outcome what is your outcome so if you are going to study only the main effects then it is not possible for your paper to get it published so while designing the experiment itself incorporate some interaction effects in that so that we'll end up with higher number of experiments so a yeah, valid conclusions or inferences can be made so this doe economically maximizes information what is this economically the trial and error method and single factor experiment methods are time consuming because it has higher number of experiments if i want to do hundreds and hundreds of experiments then i need manpower then i need material then i need a tool then i need a machinery okay look at the the cost that is associated with this instead of 200 experiments if i am going to get the same results in 12 runs then it is economically a feasible one so this doe make this economically feasible with the highest information or interpretations arriving from the outputs so then we are going to classify the problem okay the problem has to be developed into a model and then only it can be analyzed right so the problem can be generally classified into the single objective or multi objective the single objective is single output even though i have seven inputs eight inputs or two inputs i am not bothered about how many outputs that you are going to consider for your study if i am going to consider only one output then it is a single objective if i am going to consider more than one objective a tool we are surface roughness then two outputs then it becomes a multi objective tool wear surface roughness material removal rate then it is multi objective that is more than one itself a multi objective then comes the unconstrained and constrained unconstrained is i am not going to fix any target values i am not going to fix any target values for example the surface has to be smooth okay 
there will be some limit the surface roughness should not be over 4 microns okay in manufacturing you know in the drawing itself they will be representing what should be the surface finish 4 microns so i am going to fix the target as 4 microns so that becomes the problem as constraint if i am not going to fix the surface roughness value or any value i am not if i am not going to put a target to any output then it becomes a unconstrained if i am going to fix a target value or if i am going to put it at say 4 microns beyond 4 microns my surface roughness should not go then i am going to put it as a constraint a boundary then comes the variable classification a continuous one so the quantitative quantitative is 40 60 80 100 so these are all continuous 40 to 60 whether it may be 41 40 42 43 it becomes a continuous then discrete variable a integer that is case is a case is b up and down material a material b supplier 1 supplier 2 so this becomes the categorical parameters which is the discrete one then we have the mixed level then function classification whether it is the differential function or it is the linear function or it is the non convex function so what type of function that we are going to select for modeling okay so based on this the experimental problems is being classified so formulating the problem how we are going to formulate the problems okay so modeling so model plays a vital role in optimization because each and every problem is considered as a model because it has two relationship that is i am going to relate the input with the output through some models okay that's why it is an economic description and clarification of the real system so what happens when the input changes what is the corresponding effect on the output that we are going to relate through a model so in order to develop an optimization problem we we are going to have five different parts the first one is the data collection the second one is definition of the problem then developing the model then validating the model and then application or interpretation of the model okay based on the data collected we are going to formulate the problem or the research problem or the objective of the research is being carried out then based on that i am going to develop a model based on experimental work i am going to do some experiments and then based on the relationship that exists between the input and the output i am going to develop a model after developing the model i have to validate it without proper validation that model will not be accepted will not be accepted how to validate a model we have to perform a confirmation run or a experiment with the obtained optimization optimal conditions or we have to calculate the confidence interval we have to uh, calculate the confidence interval so 95% confidence interval in statistics we will be using this word confidence interval that is 95% using anova table also during formulating the anova table we will be using this confidence interval that is 95% that's why alpha value is equal to 0.05 so formulation of problem so this is the manufacturing process of an injection molding so now i am going to model okay based on the inputs and the outputs the inputs are mold temperature gate size holding pressure screw speed and all these things and the output is length width and thickness of the molded part what is the influence of mold temperature on the dimension of the part that i can study through a model a model is nothing but a relationship that is developed for the inputs and the outputs through regression equation a second order polynomial or a lower polynomial okay by using this we can develop a model so here in this case so i am going beyond the time so kindly accept this and kindly apologize me so here we have the inputs and the outputs and two factors 
One is controllable factors and the other is uncontrollable factors. So what is uncontrollable factors? The uncontrollable factors are factors that cannot be controlled during an experiment. That cannot be controlled during an experiment. Okay, that is noise. That we call it as noise. So in Taguchi's technique, we'll come across the word signal to noise ratio. So that noise is the uncontrollable factors. Whereas the uncontrollable factors are the inputs and that is called as the signal. That is called as the signals. Okay, so the output will be decided upon the controllable factors and the uncontrollable factors. So here you should not consider a noise factor as an input because that may not be able to control the vibration of a machine, the vibration of a machine. If the machine becomes older, then obviously the vibration will be there. That we cannot control. So we have to go with the newer machine. We have to do experiments in a newer machine. If I am going to continue my experimentation in the older machines, then I have to accept that noise levels or vibrations. If a vibration is there, then it has an adverse effects on the output. If the machine starts to vibrate, then the outputs will be abrupt. We cannot have a controlled environment there. That's why we should be able to identify the uncontrollable and controllable variables before doing an experiment. So, Controllable variables can be easily varied, whereas the uncontrollable variables are difficult to control. So the vibrations. Okay. So these variables are responsible for variability in the product performance. So vibration of a machine will have an adverse effects on the tool wheel, on the surface roughness. If the machine starts to vibrate, then the finish on the workpiece will be rough. It will be a rough finish. Okay, so this noise factor, the uncontrollable factor, has an adverse effect towards the output. So there are three principles of experimental design that is used to control the experiment efficiency. So one is randomization. So in the previous slide, we have seen the second one is replication, and third one is blocking. So what is the purpose of this? So randomization, replication, blocking. The purpose is to reduce the experimental bias. The bias is nothing but the error. So in order to reduce, we cannot eliminate, but we can reduce this experimental errors by means of these three principles. So what is meant by randomization? So randomizing the study or the experimental runs so that the external disturbances will tend to change because we are living in a non-stationary world which is going to have many uncontrollable or external disturbances okay so in order to eliminate or reduce this we are going with randomization so the purpose of the randomization is to eliminate or remove or reduce all sources of variation. So variations may be irrelevant variations. So relevant variation is there, irrelevant variation is there. The variation by changing the input values is a relevant variation. Irrelevant variation is because of the error, the experimental errors. So our purpose is to eliminate or reduce the irrelevant variation in output by this randomization procedure. So for example, we can have, so we will come across this word four M's, material, methodology, machine, material. So material, methodology, men, and then machinery. So in this, I'm going to consider the attitude or the emotional sequence of the people who are going to work, that is the operator, the emotion of operator. If there is any problem in their house or along with the colleagues, the attitude of the people who is working on that machine will tend to change. Okay, so that will have an adverse effect on the outputs. The purpose of randomization is 
is to eliminate or reduce these experimental errors. Then replications. So what is meant by replication? The other word for replication is repetition. So whenever we are submitting some manuscripts using these Zisnoff experiments, the reviewer will ask a question. How many replications you have done? So how many times you are repeated that experiment? Okay. The purpose of the question is, if we are going to do this experiment again and again, the error that is arising through that of the noise factors or external disturbances will get reduced. If I'm going to replicate the experiment by thrice, that is three times, then finally I have to take the average and then that only could be used for analysis. Okay, so some variation is introduced in any experimental that is carried out in industry because of the four M's, the machinery, men, method, the material that we are going to use. So that we normally call it as four M's. Okay. So in order to avoid this experimental error, we are going to repeat. So the repetition may be the total experiment or some portions of the experiment. So what is the portion of that experiment? Any one experimental trial or run, I am going to replicate. So in a, in a response surface methodology, if I am going to use central composite design, CCD design, we call it a CCD design. Okay, we have some repetition of experiments for three factors varied through three levels, you will end up with the 20 experimental runs. Among that, six runs will be repeated. Same experiment will be repeated six times. So if I'm going to end up with the, the nearby values, so exact values, it is not possible in the experiment. So nearby values, if I'm going to get, then the experimental error will be lower. So that the repetitions, we can do it by fold. So all the 20 experiments I can done, or a single experimental run, a part can be replicated. The purpose is to identify the experimental error, and then we are going to eliminate that error. So the replication has three important properties. Right? The first one is to have the more accurate estimate. So what is the exact amount of error that is available in the study? The second one is to <clears throat> determine what is the exact effect of the individual parameter, that is the main effects or the interaction. The first one is accurate estimate of the error. And second one is the accurate estimate of the effects. And third one is we are going to decrease the experimental error. So that is the main purpose of this, so that the precision, the accuracy can be improved. But the problem is, whenever I'm going to repeat the experiments, then economically you have to manage and then time will be higher. So these are the two limitations that we have with this repetition. Because again and again, if I'm going to do experiments, then obviously economically you have to manage and then it is a time-consuming principle. Then blocking. So what is the purpose of blocking? So the purpose of blocking is to eliminate the experimental bias or experimental errors. That is, the noise factors, the effect of noise factors is being eliminated in this case. So, you can come across many types of variability. A batch to batch variation, day to day variation, shift to shift variation. So batch to batch, in a shift, I'm going to put three batches. The same combination, three batches. But whenever we look into the components that is produced by these three batches, there will be some sort of variation. So that is called as batch to batch. In the same shift, batch to batch variation. When compared with the top two shifts, the morning shift and the night shift. Okay, we'll have some variations, and that is called a shift to shift variation. Today, tomorrow, day after tomorrow. So three days, if I take a concert, then it is called as a day to day variation.
So the variations occurring because of this can be reduced by means of blocking. So in the case of blocking, similar or homogeneous, the same kind of experiments are being blocked. So that, that can be done at a particular period of time. Okay, non-similar conditions can be carried out in other conditions. So similar things has to be grouped. That is called as block one. Similarly, the next similarities are grouped under block two. The purpose is when it is similar, then obviously the settings we cannot change a lot. Okay, so that the experimental error will be reduced. Okay, so the observation collected under the same experimental condition will be set in the same block. So block one, so block two. The purpose is to eliminate unwanted sources of variability because of people who are working in that. The process selection. So the process variables that we are going to select includes both the inputs and outputs. The inputs are called as factors, whereas the outputs are called as responses. So input factors, output response. The, that is the word that we'll be using. So the selection of the variables is done as a team work. So what is a team? If I'm going to do my research, then I have to sit along with my supervisor so that I can use his expertise. So I can use his expertise to select the influential parameters. If I don't want to get the help from other persons, if I'm going to select it by my own, then there is a chance of eliminating some of the influential parameters. So a parameter may be influential but I'm not going to consider that. So that is kind of error may also exist. So in order to avoid that, we have to select these variables as a team effort. So all the important factors should be identified and that should be incorporated in your study. That should be incorporated in your studies. So we have to be bold enough in choosing the low and high value, high factor value. So someone will be asking, so how to select the level values? Two level, three level, four level, five level. How to select or when to select? If my range, the lower range and upper range first I have to fix. For cutting speed, 100, 300. 100 is my lower range and 300 is my upper range. So first this I have to fix. Then I have to select whether it is the two level design, three level design, four level, five level I can if the range is higher or wide, if the range, the low range and high range, it is wider enough, then increase the number of level values. If it is small, if the range is small, then we can end up go with two or three levels. If it is a wider range, then go with four level or five levels. So check for factors that is impractical in nature. So low pressure, that is not possible. That is possible, but it needs some special designs. Very high gas flows. That is also possible with newer designs. So before going for any experimental studies, we have to do the feasibility analysis. We call it as the feasibility analysis. Whether this process is feasible or not. The equipment that is needed for my work is feasible or not. So that feasibility analysis we have to do and then only we have to select the factors. So it is a teamwork. That's why we are telling that the selection of these variables is a teamwork. So what is the purpose? So to draw statistically sound conclusions by integrating simple and powerful statistical methods. So the purpose of this DOI is to integrate the powerful statistical methods in that so that we are going to arrive some sound conclusions. So here we are going to have, as told you earlier, we are going to have two process variables, that is qualitative and quantitative. So qualitative, the other name is categorical, and quantitative, the other name is numerical. The, in injection molding process, if I'm going to consider the screw speed, the mold temperature, the mold temperature may be, for example, 220, 260, 280. So that is numerical in nature. So that is quantitative factors. That is quantitative factors. Whereas 
the qualitative factors are the raw materials the raw material the type of cattle the type of supplier supplier a supplier b that are all categorical parameters so that is the qualitative factors so a qualitative factors require more levels a qualitative factor requires more levels whereas these quantitative factors require lower levels okay so what is a level actually so level is nothing but a specified value in cutting speed three level values is 100 meter per minute 200 meter per minute and 300 meter per minute so level is nothing but a, a specific value it is a specific value so in doi terminology a run a trial is nothing but a combination of inputs based on which a single experiment can be done so I'm going to done a single experiment. So what are the inputs, combinations that we are going to consider? It is an experimental run or experimental trial. So here we come across the word, the important word, degrees of freedom. So it is nothing but the number of independent and fair comparisons that can be made. So what is the independent and fair comparison? So there are two papers, for example, X and Y. So a comparison can be made only between these two papers, these two papers. That is, a fair comparison can be made only once. So among these two people, the degrees of freedom is one. Okay. So here I'm going to consider two people, John and Kevin. So I'm going to compare the heights of Kevin and John. So only one fair comparison can be made. So that's, that's nothing but the difference. So only one comparison can be made. So the degrees of freedom for it. this case is one. Okay. So for experimental input factor, the degrees of freedom is equal to number of levels minus one. For example, for cutting speed, if I'm going to consider three levels, then the degrees of freedom for cutting speed is if I'm going to consider three levels, so three minus one, which is equal to two. So that is my degrees of freedom. So for total experimental runs, if I'm going to consider 20 experimental runs, then the degrees of freedom for the total experiment is 20 minus one, which is equal to 90. So for total minus one, so that is the, for the entire experiment, total experimental runs minus one. So what is the degrees of freedom for an interaction? A, B. A and B are main events. A, B is an interaction. For A, if I am going to consider three values, three level values, then degrees of freedom for A is three minus one, two. Similarly for B, two degrees of freedom, consider. Then for interaction, A, B, the degrees of freedom is equal to the degrees of freedom of A, 2, into degrees of freedom for B, 2, which is equal to 4. So it is the product of degrees of freedom for one parameter into the degrees of freedom of the another parameter. <clears throat> See, compounding, you know, the inability, that is the inability to have the effects of one over the another. So the last one, that I will be <coughs> showing you in this slide, in this DOE is this ANOVA. So ANOVA is a different topic. It is a vast and it's a statistical tool. Okay. So why we are going to tell this ANOVA in this? Because ANOVA determines the variance among the input factors. For example, cutting speed, feed rate, and depth of cut. I am going to consider for my study. I'm going to have an output, tool wear. So for this tool wear, I'm going to formulate the ANOVA. So what I'm going to identify or infer is, what is the variance, variations that exist among the three inputs that I can determine? So ANOVA is a statistical tool which provides a flexible methodology for identifying the variance or the difference among the means. So this ANOVA is, can be applied for data that can be collected in an experimental manner or in a non-experimental manner. So what is the experimental manner? 
if i'm going to do some experiment in a chemical reaction bath or in a electroplating setup or in a turning process by using a machine then it becomes experimental the non experimental manner the data that is collected from questionnaires surveys feedbacks so you can see some of the feedbacks also so the data that is collected from these methods is known as non experimental methods so in uh, formulating this anova we should be very very careful in two things one is which are all the dependent variables which are all the independent variables the dependent variables are the outputs and the independent variables are the inputs so we should be very very careful in selecting these factors so in this anova we are going to consider some hypothesis so everyone who might have studied this statistical statistical tools in this we might have come across this word hypothesis the hypothesis is nothing but an assumption the hypothesis is nothing but an assumption so for example the mean surface roughness using tool is less than or equal to the mean surface roughness of using another tool so that is my hypothesis that is my assumption so hypothesis is nothing but an assumption of a general population if i am having nine experimental outputs then my population size is nine if i am having 20 experimental outputs then my population size is 20 so there are two types of hypothesis one is null hypothesis and the other one is alternate hypothesis the null hypothesis is a preferred assumption about a population and the alternate hypothesis is reverse to that of null hypothesis so it is the opposite of null hypothesis for example in the null hypothesis i am going to consider there is no variance among the inputs there is no variance or variation among the inputs that is my null hypothesis in the case of alternate hypothesis it is just opposite there will be variance so we have to accept null hypothesis or alternate hypothesis based on my outputs so the null hypothesis the mean number of defects per assembly in the population is more than or equal to 2 so i am going to assume the hypothesis is nothing but assumption so initially i am going to assume the number of defects in a sample is greater than or equal to 2 alternate hypothesis it will be less than that's all it is just an opposite to that of the null hypothesis so based on this there will be two different types of errors type 1 and type 2 right so here we come across another term that is called a significance level the probability with which the null hypothesis will be rejected due to sampling error is known as the significance level okay okay so h not null hypothesis is true but we are going to reject that because of some sampling error you have to understand clearly the what i have assumed in null hypothesis is true but based on my sampling data i am going to reject because of the error in the data and that is my significance level so there are two types of errors one is type 1 error and the other one is type 2 error so type 1 error is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it is true so the null hypothesis i am going to reject because of this sampling error even though it is right that is type 1 a type 2 is accepting the null hypothesis when it is false so i am going to consider the null hypothesis there is no variance okay if there is a variance then i have to reject the null hypothesis my assumption is no variation among the inputs okay depending upon the sample if this is not going to have any variance between them then i have to accept the null hypothesis or if there is variance then i have to accept the alternate hypothesis so because some some 
sampling error. I am going in the reverse way. So even though the null hypothesis is true, I am going to reject that, and that is called as type one error. So the accepting the null hypothesis when it is false, then it becomes the type two error. So with this, I come to the end of this presentation. Uh, it is a lengthier one, and uh, I feel uh, sorry for this because I taken half an hour beyond twelve of your valuable time. So kindly accept that. So if you have any queries, you can put it in the chat box so that I will clarify it. Is it is it any queries, sir? Uh, any queries? Hello. Hello. Sir, sir, tell, tell me, sir. Sir, this is Shubhu Sir, welcome, sir. Tell me, sir. Sir, or uh, or uh, or Raju or Sir, Five years back, okay. I got our project for a student's project. Okay. That is that is the uh, rubber composite material. Okay. Uh, we utilize that uh, Takuchi uh, design of experiment method okay. by using uh, mini tap. Okay. Uh, one more project uh, only we connected only by fabrication project only. Okay. By using uh, by using that uh, uh, fabrication project reading we can make a uh, SN ratio all the things in that mini tab now. Right, yes, sir. Okay. Sir, we can do it for any type of experiments. Taguchi's DOA can be suitable for any type of experiment. Okay. So, for example, different combination of materials. The composite material which produces higher tensile strength, higher hardness. That also we can determine. Yeah, ah, okay, okay, okay. Taguchi utilized both the analyzing as well as this design of experiments. So Taguchi combined both this DOE and analysis procedure. But okay. in the simple DOE, we are going to just design the experiments. And for analysis, we have to use other tools. So that is the advantage of going for Taguchi. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So anything else, sir? Okay, sir. Thanks for this opportunity and thanks to everyone who has joined this webinar. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. As we said earlier about our resource, resource person is proven by his uh, speech. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your uh, valuable speech. Thank you, sir. May I request Mr. G.P. Satish Kumar, Assistant Professor of Department Mechanical, to propose the vote of thanks. Good afternoon to all. It gives me great pressure for proposing the vote of thanks for the webinar on Introduction to Ex Design of Experiments. First, I express my sincere thanks to our management, principal, vice principal, and dean of academics for their continuous support and ready assistance rendered for making this event a grand success. Thank you all. I render my heartfelt thanks on behalf of our management, our department, and all the participants to our resource person for sharing his insights on design of experiments with us. I hope all the participants had a great and informative session. Thank you, sir. I extend my sincere thanks to our head of the department and all other staff members of our department for their support and cooperation. Thank you, sir. I also extend my thankfulness to all the participants from various colleges who made this event a grand success. Also, I would like to thank the persons behind the technical support and all other who have contributed directly or indirectly for the successful conduct of this function. Thank you, sir. Once again, I thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, sir.
थैंक यू सर थैंक यू ऑल सर